Good morning. Good morning. I'm Noel Levine, your worship assistant today. Our minister, Reverend Kathy McCall, is away, so we have a special guest speaker, Lori Brandt. Let's welcome Lori. <laughs> we are part of a larger unity movement founded by Charles and Myrtle Fillmore in 1890. As a result of their personal healing, Unity is the publisher of the Daily Word magazine and Silent Unity. The prayer ministry of Unity has been holding prayer vigil for 133 years. We welcome our prayer chaplain today, who is uh, um, Rebecca. Rebecca Thompson. And her number is, we'll give later when we show the screen at announcement time. Thanks, Brandy. You can, you can let me know what I gotta say anytime. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Today our production team includes Brandy McLaughlin and Chris Italiano. And our musician is Claire Van der Grummer. Or Grummer. Let's welcome them all. <laughs> now our musician Claire will lead us in an opening song. And I'm sure hoping that screen changes to lyrics because we have some. Do we have lyrics? They're coming, they're coming. Yes, and everybody can stand and get the circulation rolling here. We're going to sing Spirit Calls this morning. Spirit calls, come up high, your spirit calls, I believe. Spirit calls, come up high, your love lifts us up, sets us free. Sets us free from all lack or limitation, sets us free to realize who we can be. We are free and unlimited in light, truth and love. Spirit calls, so stand up and believe. Spirit calls, come up high, your spirit calls, I believe. Spirit calls, come up high, your love lifts us up, sets us free. Sets us free from all lack or limitation, sets us free to realize who we can be. We are free and unlimited in light, truth and love. Spirit calls, so stand up and believe. Spirit calls, come up high, your spirit calls, I believe. Spirit calls, come up high, your love lifts us up, sets us free. Love lifts us up, sets us free. rallying opening song. This is the time in our service when we greet one another. So if you're on Zoom, please turn on your cameras if, cameras if you are able. And if you're joining us for the first time or if you're from out of state, also wave your hand. There's Candy and Ken are here today. Uh, and Wendy's here. Okay, good. And then everybody else, you can greet one another now and wave to the people in the Zoom land at that camera up in the back there. <laughs> so let's uh okay where do we are at this time we take a moment for prayer requests we generally uh don't we, the only time we will pray for somebody else is if you let us know in advance like by friday or something but uh for your information reverend kathy uh can, didn't return as early, or she's not going to return as early as she assumed because she's having a two-week delay. The hardware in her hip slipped a bit, and she has to have a light weight bearing only on her surgery leg for an extra two weeks to make sure it's stable. So please uh, join us in prayer for Reverend Kathy while we do this prayer moment. Uh, but first of all, I want everybody to uh, take in a breath to uh, further center themselves. And as you breathe in, bring peace, love, and joy within. And as you breathe out, release stress, worry, 
and fear. Instead of saying our requests out loud, we invite you to speak a name or prayer silently in the sanctuary or aloud in the privacy of your home. And hold these requests in silence. We give thanks in advance for answered prayers, and we say thank you, Mother, Father, God, and so it is, amen. Let us remain centered and still as I read our daily word. The daily word for Sunday, September 3rd is refresh. Honoring the divine presence within, I am refreshed. Stretching and yawning after a good sleep, enjoying a brisk walk in the early morning, or sipping a replenishing drink after a workout or time in the sun, I feel refreshed. I move forward into my next activity with a renewed feeling of well-being. Building upon and refreshing my knowledge may relieve me from thinking too much about my obligations. Spending time with a good book or revisiting favorite passages from my favorite writing can give me a relaxing mental pause. I find many opportunities to refresh my awareness that God, the divine presence, is within me wherever I am, whatever I am doing. It takes only a moment to find God's presence reflected in the people and animals I encounter and in the natural beauty that surrounds me. From Romans chapter 15, 32, so that by God's will I may come to you with joy and be refreshed in your company. And now Claire will play us some music to prepare us for meditation. to that exquisite time, fully immersing ourselves in the presence of Mother, Father, God, becoming aware that at the very core of our being, we are one with Creator God. There is no separation except in our confused human mind. 
But in this moment, we have clarity. We have understanding, we have awareness of our oneness with Mother, Father, God. And in that place, a connection of communion, we relax, letting go of any and all earthly concerns. We relax into oneness in the silence. One, one in and with Mother, Father, God. I now live my life more fully and more joyfully. One with Creator God. I am solidly on my own spiritual path to expansion and spiritual growth. One, with Mother, Father, God, I am successful and prosperous and share generously with others. One, with Creator God, I am divinely guided and I am at peace. With gratitude overflowing, I say thank you, God, for the abundant blessings in my life. Now with a long, deep breath, we gently bring our awareness back to this time and place. As we continue our spiritual journey together this morning at Unity North. I listen to the wind, to the wind of my soul Where it takes me, where I end up, only God really knows Set upon the setting sun, but never, 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 I never wanted water once. No, never, 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 never. But they fall far below I let the music take me where my heart wants to go I sat upon the setting sun but never 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 I never wanted
Only God really knows I sat upon the setting sun But never, 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 never I never wanted water once No, never, 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 never Thank you so much, Claire. Your music and your words always are just right on target. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Okay. Are we awake yet? <laughs> Let's try that again. Good morning. Good morning. Okay. Now I'm awake too. Thank you. <laughs> it's a pleasure to be back with you today. Although we do hold Reverend Kathy and our thoughts and prayers for optimal healing. You know, walking into your beautiful spiritual center in the foyer is that wonderful greeting, that welcome that says, wherever you are in your spiritual journey, you're welcome here. I see that in a lot of different unity centers. And while this might invite people of various faith groups, various religious, uh, spiritual paths into fellowship here. I want you to consider it a little differently this morning. This is a call to you and me for self-reflection. In other words, where are you in your spiritual journey? So how do you know where you're at? Well, are you at peace at all times and in all situations? Do you move through life with an uninterrupted sense of oneness with Creator God? Can you effortlessly, effortlessly manifest whatever you desire? Do you enjoy optimal health, career success, financial wellness, rich and fulfilling relationships? If you weren't able to unequivocally shout yes to every one of these questions, welcome to the human race. Nearly all of us have our work to do on our own spiritual journey. In fact, I believe that's why we're here on planet Earth, to learn, to expand in consciousness, to more fully know and express the divinity in which we were all created. So if you're sensing that there's a little more room in your life for more spiritual development, you're in the right place today. This is the perfect opportunity, the perfect topic, too, for Labor Day Sunday, where spiritual expansion does take some time and effort. What we're going to do this Sunday is explore what I call the B attitudes. Not the B attitudes, the B attitudes for spiritual growth. So are you ready? Yes. Yes. All right. <laughs> when you came in this morning to the sanctuary here, did everybody get one of these little acorns? If you didn't raise your hand, because my husband Lee is in back and he has more, these are not snacks. <laughs> Well, I suppose they could be, but... And for those of you watching from home, you're just going to have to engage that power of imagina imagination and imagine that you, too, are holding an acorn. Look at this little guy. Small, unassuming. It was kind of hard when you look at one of these to imagine that, that this little thing someday that's going to grow into a massive, giant, elegant oak tree. Now, when you look at this acorn, 
Are you going to shake your finger at it and say, shame on you? You're not an oak tree. You're not even a respectable sapling yet. What's your problem? Of course you wouldn't. That's kind of silly, isn't it? We understand that this acorn has its own unique development process to go through to sprout, to plant its roots, to begin to grow, to emerge as a sapling, and eventually, very eventually, to become a huge, impressive oak tree. It takes nurturing, it requires water and sunshine, and even the various seasonal changes affect it. Any prodding, shaming, or demanding on our part won't hurry it along. In the right conditions, this little acorn will grow at its own unique pace. Our spiritual journey is the same. Given the right conditions, you and I will grow at our own pace. Prodding, shaming, or demanding won't hurry us along on our journey. So the first beatitude for spiritual growth is this. Be gentle. Be gentle with yourself. It takes as long as it takes, and that's okay. Be gentle with yourself. Be gentle with the process. The second B attitude is be consistent. Well, since you're here on Sunday morning and you've tuned in on Sunday morning, I know you already have some spiritual practices in place. Services, classes, reading the daily words, spiritual books, a prayer and meditation practice. All of these are important to our spiritual growth, and they don't need to be complex or overly time-consuming. However, we do need to be consistent in our spiritual practices. Showing up once a week for an hour on Sunday morning, I would suggest, is not enough. What one or two or maybe three things can you do or do you do every day that feed you spiritually? You know, once you decide on those practices, engage the second B attitude. Be consistent. Do you remember when you were in school studying for that big end of semester test? And all your instructors and professors said, you know, study during the semester instead of that last minute all nighter exam cram. Remember those days? Yeah, a few of us do. A little bit of study, a little bit of work over a period of time is much more effective than a last minute exam cram, if you will. And the same method applies to spiritual practice a little bit every day. Identify those practices that you resonate with, that fulfill you, and be consistent. The third beatitude is be flexible. Identifying and engaging certain spiritual practices important to your development is important to your development, but you may find that what's working for you today may not work as well tomorrow or next week or next year. In fact, there's a whole smorgasbord of spiritual practices, lots of subcategories and variations that we can pick and choose from. Don't get irrevocably locked into a routine. Be flexible. And the next beatitude that goes with that is be guided. Be flexible and be guided. Listen to the voice of spirit. As spirit encourages you in one direction or another, as you engage your spiritual practices consistently, you will be increasingly aware of that inner knowing, your intuition, which I call that still small voice of God that whispers in our ear, you know, sometimes those messages from spirit 
don't seem to make much sense from a human perspective, but I've learned in my own journey, they are always effective and for my highest good. Early in my spiritual journey, I was contemplating this idea of being guided and listening to my intuition and listen, listening to spirit. I happened to be packing for a business trip and intuition was telling me, or my logical mind was saying, this is a business trip. You don't need any casual attire. You don't need any clips to pull your hair back and up. Business only, so focus on business. That was my rational mind. My rational mind was also saying, with the schedule you have, you aren't going to have any playtime. This is not time to be casual. And intuition said, Lori, pack, pack a little bit in your suitcase for some downtime, for some casual time. And then a huge argument developed <laughs> between rational mind and intuition, which of course is spirit speaking. Well, I was newly on the spiritual path and very used to listening to rational mind rather than spiritual intuition. So I didn't beg anything for downtime, for casual time. As that trip unfolded, lo and behold, several opportunities for casual time came up and I wasn't prepared because I'd failed to listen to spirit. Now, that's not a life-shaking, earth-shaking, life-or-death situation, but it got my attention, and it inspired me to start paying much closer attention when that intuitive knowing, that insight came to me and reminded me that I needed not only to listen to that voice of intuition, but to follow it. Interestingly, the more I did that, the more insights I received. I was practicing, listening to the voice of God, gently yet unerringly guiding me. Here's another example. Just last week, my husband and I were spending time with friends playing a board game. And the hand I held logically suggested my next play, but intuition told me to make a different play. I hesitated, but then I remembered, okay, intuition is the voice of God, I think I'll listen to it, and I did. And the play that I made, even though it didn't quite make logical sense, set us up to win the game two hands later. You know, even if that divine guidance involves little innocuous things like packing for a business trip or playing a board game. It's all about practicing, listening to that still small voice. So in your spiritual journey, the lesson is be open to spirit, be flexible, and be guided. The fifth the attitude is be non-judgmental. You know, I love teaching classes, classes on spiritual topics, always fun and interesting, connecting with people, sharing spiritual ideas, exploring even more. And periodically it happens that someone in the class will share a particularly meaningful spiritual experience that they had. They'll say something like, you know, I was meditating on this lesson last week and I had this incredible ethereal vision in my meditation and I just knew in that moment I was one with Mother, Father, God. It's so cool, isn't it? Or someone will say, I have been praying for this particular outcome and suddenly my prayer was answered much better than than I would have imagined or put together myself. Those are wonderful stories to hear. However, I have noticed when someone shares an experience like that, there are other people in the class that are listening to that and watching that and hearing that 
and I know what they're thinking. They are sitting there thinking, well, why don't I have profound spiritual experiences like that? I've never seen color and flashing lights when I meditate. My prayers weren't answered in spectacular fashion. What's wrong with me? Judgment. Or the con conversely, we may decide that we are doing better, faster, further, farther on our spiritual path compared to what other people are sharing. You know, it's an easy trap to fall into. In our humanity, we welcome ex affirming experiences, and the more spectacular, the better. In our humanity, we tend to compare our experiences to those of others and sometimes find ourselves lacking. Let me remind you, we are each of us on our own unique path. Our journey will be different from everyone else's. And the question we're exploring today is, where are you on your spiritual journey? Not where are they on their spiritual journey? When we fall into comparing and judging experiences, we've lost sight of our spiritual goals of growth and evolution, and we've fallen into the trap of judgment. Jesus the Christ, our teacher, our way shower, very clearly says, judge not. He was aware of this potential trap and warned us against it. The corresponding beatitude is be non-judgmental. And of course, always be gentle with yourself and others. The sixth beatitude for spiritual development is be in community. You've all seen the cartoon of the, the guru sitting on the mountaintop or the monk all by himself in inhospitable weather. He's missing out on an important part of the spiritual journey. Up there on the mountaintop, he is not in community. Being in community is an extremely valuable part of our spiritual journey. You see, when we're in community, and I know those of you here and at home have all experienced this, we're encouraged and supported on our path. We can learn and grow together. We can learn from each other. In community, we're gently lifted up when we fall short, and we will fall short along the way. And in those moments, please remember to be non-judgmental and be gentle. For so often when we fall short, what we're running into are powerful and important lessons for us to learn on our own spiritual journey. In community, we share the language of spirituality. In community, we're loved and we're accepted as we are, wherever we are on that spiritual path. Even with our shortcomings, even when we have room or much room for growth and expansion. In community, we are reminded of who and what we are. That is spiritual beings having a human experience. Consider the word community itself, co-unity. Community is practicing unity ideas together. I love it. In community, we thrive and grow, we support each other, and we celebrate each step on our respective spiritual journeys. Ultimately, you know, our destination's the same, to know our absolute oneness with Mother, Father, God, and to live every moment of every day from that oneness. For more fulfillment, for more development, and frankly, a whole lot more fun, be in community. 
Our seventh B attitude for spiritual development is be generous. As we are in community, we may become acutely aware that we're not alone in this world. There are others who would benefit from our generosity of spirit, whether we're giving of our time, our talents, or our treasure. And our generosity completes the spiritual cycle of giving and receiving. For as we give, so we receive. The receiver is blessed in the receiving, the giver is blessed in the giving. Deepak Chopra, in his book, The Seven Spiritual Laws of Success, reminds us that the universe operates in dynamic exchange. And that stopping circulation is like stopping the flow of life-giving blood. When blood stops flowing, it begins to clot, to coagulate, to stagnate. We must give and receive in order to keep wealth, energy, affluence, anything you want circulating in your life. Further, the more you give, the more you receive when you're in the flow of the universe. If you want more joy in your life, give joy to others. If you want more love, be more loving. If you want more attention and appreciation, give attention and appreciation to others. If you want more material abundance, help others attain material abundance. If you want to be blessed with all the good things in life, learn to silently bless everyone with all of life's goodness. There's an important caveat to this. Your intention is important. Give from, a, from spiritual generosity. Don't give with the idea that if I give, now I'm going to get something back. Being generous with our time, talents, and treasure helps us develop spiritually. It keeps us in the dynamic flow of life and blesses everyone. So be generous with your time, your talents, and your abundance. Still got your little acorn? Take this home and let it remind you that you have your own process of growth and evolution on your spiritual path. There's no rush. You will get there when you get there. And along the way, you'll experience significant spiritual growth when you practice the be attitudes. Be gentle. Be consistent, be flexible, and be guided. Be non-judgmental, be in community, and be generous. May you, each and every one of you, be richly fulfilled in your spiritual journey. And so it is. I think it was 1979 when Cat Stevens, now known as Youssef, um, decided that he needed to go on a journey. And he donated his guitars to charity. Um, and he um, had been given a book by his brother. Um, and decided he needed to join a Muslim community. Uh, it wasn't a, a short journey either. 20 years later, after practicing um, and reading the Quran, he, um, he resurfaced in doing his music. And um, I thought this would be a great song 
um, it's one of his and one that he wrote before he went on his journey, which is kind of in its own way, very prophetic or his knowing that he needed to go. It's called On the Road to Find Out. Well, I left my happy home to see what I could find out. I left my folks and friends. With the aim to clear my mind out Well, I hit the rowdy road Many a story's told there Many a story's told me of the way to get there to know and I'm on the road to find out Ooh, mm -hmm. and in the end I'll know but on the way I wonder through descending snow through the frost and thunder And I listen to the wind come howl Telling me I have to hurry Listen to the robin song Saying not to worry Even trying, and here I have to say, cause there's no use in lying, cause the answers lie within. Why not take a look now? Find the light within. song Claire just beautiful wow I really like that and I really like your message today Lori it's a very good message life is a journey and we're always trying to improve and it's nice to have some signposts along the way to, to check with so that was great so now's the time when we take a, a moment to bless our offering since we don't collect offerings live like we used to. Actually, if you're here in presence, there's a basket at the back where you can uh, leave an offering. If you choose to give it uh, digitally, there's a, you could take a picture of this QR code and you can uh, give that way or you can just go to our website or you can always mail a check and the address for this place is on the, on the website as well. So if you join with me now, holding your love offering in your heart, divine love flowing through me now blesses and multiplies 
all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive, and I am grateful. And now Claire will play us some more beautiful music. <laughs> Now it's the time when we will have our announcements for Sunday, September 3rd. And at the top, Rebecca Thompson is a prayer chaplain. She'll be willing to pray with you right after her service or probably even beyond that. Uh, just contact her at 424-490-11. And I know that I called her once a couple days after the service and she was more than willing to pray with me. And prayer is very important to do with somebody else. It's just really a, a dynamic experience up here. Pray together with someone else. Uh, the Unity World Day of Prayer is coming up, speaking of prayer, on September 14th at 7 p.m. So join our Unity Prayer Chaplains and Reverend Kathy as they come together to join our prayers with others praying worldwide throughout the Unity Movement on this special day. The theme is Heart of Healing, we will share prayers, poetry, music, and meditation. So if you have some prayer, poetry, or something you want to share, that would be an opportunity to do it at that event. Take time out and treat yourselves to an hour of peace and relaxation. And there's the link, and that will also be on the website. Special fund congratulations. We have successfully raised our goal of over $10,000. $10,000 was the goal, and our goal now, our the, the amount we raised at the end of this period was $10,469. Let's give it a call. Thanks, everyone, for making their commitment and generosity. We have upcoming guest speakers to next week. Uh, the Unity North Prayer Chaplains and Reverend Kathy. Kathy will have the service. Uh, Kathy will speak virtually, so will Rebecca. Okay, uh, we, and let's once again remind you to pray for Reverend Kathy's healing. Our guest spec, uh, speakers on September 17th are Reverend Lori Brandt again, and after that, the following Sunday, Reverend Barbara Winter Martin. At this time, I want Kathleen to come up here, and she's got something to share with us. So, this is always fun. <laughs> That's what you say. <laughs> now I have a captive audience. No. Um, all right. You haven't seen me up here for a while, but I thought I would come today to let you know our, our usual family promise hosting week would have started next Sunday. And so 
in place of the families who we don't actually house them here for a week like we used to, we are helping them by, they are all either in a, um, a hotel or they've managed to transition to a home and we are hoping to keep them in their homes. And so what we're looking for is to support them with some cleaning supplies this upcoming week. Um, the, each family, we are helping five families out. Each family is in need of some cleaning supplies, paper supplies. And in the Narthex, over by the drinking fountains, I've got some sign-up sheets um, to just feel free to put your name down if you could like donate some of these goods, or I'll be more than happy to take uh, monetary donations and I'll do the shopping. This is a quick turnaround. I always um, get a little last minute kind of notices what we what the needs are for the family. So I need all of this stuff back to the church or purchased by next Sunday. So take a look. I'll be if you have any questions, I'll be over by the drinking fountains to help you out. Thanks. Thanks, Kathleen. There's a book study coming up. Uh, the book is called Becoming Kin by Patty Crack, and Rhonda Italiano will be leading that book study. It's on Mondays, starting September 11th. It goes for six weeks through October 16th, from 7 to 8.30 on the hybrid Zoom. So hybrid, so it's both in person and on Zoom. This remarkable sojourn through native and settler history, myth, identity, and spirituality helps us retrace our steps and pick up what was lost along the way. Chances to honor rather than violate treaties, to see the land as a relative rather than a resource, and to unravel the history we have been taught. So please read through page 24 before the first meeting. You can register online. And I, the books might be in the in the uh, North X. Do we have books on sale here for that? Then you would know if anybody would know Brandy. So if you don't yeah, know, no, I, don't, I will get a link though right away for those books. I yeah, I got one online. I went online and got one. I think through I think Amazon. Crazy to get on the website right away. Okay, thanks, Brandy. Yeah, sorry about that. Yeah. Oh no, that's okay. You're doing great so far. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the one I'm worried about. <laughs> okay, next class will be Awakening the Twelve Powers with Reverend Kathy. It's a seven-week Sunday series with Wednesday classes. So she'll be talking on Sunday with uh, these Twelve Powers, and then we will talk more and study them during classes on Wednesday from October 1st through November 12th, from 6.30 to 8.30 Central Time on Zoom only. Join us for a most unique experience of unity's 12 powers, synthesizing the powers with Jungian and biblical archetypes. We will take a seven week heroic journey to awaken and discover our divine self. Each lesson stands on its own, but it is recommended that you immerse yourself and listen to all for a deeper experience. We'll be covering two powers a week. Register for classes on the website. That should be a very uplifting. At this time, we will uh, do this prayer for abundance in our church. Centered in prayerful intention, we give thanks for an overflowing abundance of spiritual awakening, prosperity, new members, and children for Unity North Spiritual Center. In the prayer for protection, the light of God surrounds us. I am the light of God. The love of God enfolds us. I am the love of God. The power of God protects us. I am the power of God. The presence of God watches over us. I am the presence of God. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. And now before we do our closing song, I want to uh, once again thank uh, Lori Brandt for being our, give us, teaching us a lesson today, and for Chris Italiano and Brandy McLaughlin for helping keep the technical part of the program going.
and for Claire Vandergommert, who once again has entertained us with beautiful music. Let's give them all a hand. We can sing now. Stand up and let's do the peace song. Here we go. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Each more. 